gathered here. There you go. <laughs> well, hello everyone, Dr. David Ajibade here, and this is our Wednesday, Wednesday uh, weekly webinar. And tonight we'll be talking about the cardiovascular system. The title is The Heart of the Matter. And kind of, you know, we're playing, playing, playing on words a little bit. But we're going to do a quick recap. Uh, last week we talked about the brain. We talked about how important it is to look at the brain or issues concerning the brain, not just from one aspect, which of course is the brain, but we also have to look at the immune system. We have to look at, look at the digestive system. We've got to look at the endocrine system because your hormones also affect the function of your brain. And we also have to look at the cardiovascular system. So uh, after speaking with Jan, Jan about this, we said, okay, well, let's, let's go to the cardiovascular system next because I mean, if you think about it, and I'm going to get to this in the, as, as we, we go along, but uh, you can have the best nutrients in the world. You can have the top of the line products, but if those nutrients aren't going to where they need to get to, if, um, for that matter, if oxygen is not getting to the brain or where oxygen needs to get to, and that's every cell of your body, you're not going to be living too, for too long, probably not going to be living well. And the cardiovascular system, the heart and the blood vessels are what help to bring oxygen and nutrients to every cell in your body, especially your brain. So there's no way, no way you're going to enjoy or have good brain health if you're not having sufficient cardiovascular health. And what we know is that as you grow older, blood flow to your brain and to different parts of your brain diminishes. Yes, I know. Being going old sucks. <laughs> I'm experiencing it myself too. And um, things that we used to do before that we used to enjoy, no longer we, do, we, do I enjoy them anymore like, like, like we should. Even healing. I mean, I, 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 played, I played competitive racquetball. I was state champion in racquetball um, in uh, Oklahoma for a few years. And um, I mean, when we had injuries, we would, we would maybe a few weeks we'll be out of commission. And then we would bounce back. And, uh, and then uh, get, get back to playing. But these days, that doesn't happen anymore. Now, these days, it's like complete, you're out of commission for, for six months to a year when you have an injury. And I'm like, oh, gosh. Oh, for those days when we would still be young again. So uh, circulation, the, the cardiovascular system is what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to be pointing to one major aspect. If you can get that aspect right, when it comes to blood flow, it would go a long, long way towards improving overall health. So we're just going to get, go into that uh, in, in a short while. I'm going to, get, to pull up uh, my slides and then we'll get right into it. Hang on just a minute. <laughs> I always forget to kind of like show how this thing, let's see if get this right now, share screen, there you go. Um, and please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, and then we'll get to them at the end. So let me know, can we all see the screen? Give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Thumbs up. Is that a thumbs up? Um, Lucia, let me have a thumbs up. You're the only one I can see yes, right sir. now. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, good. Okay. okay, so let's just get right into it. Again, this is not to replace your doctor's expert advice. Your doctor has your, your records. He knows you. He has examined you. What we're doing here, and that's one reason why we don't talk about drugs at all, because we're not trying to replace your medical, uh, the, your medical advice from the doctor. We're talking about supplements, things on the other end, things that you can do to help to rebuild, uh, regain, uh, improve your health. Doctor primarily focuses on a disease or a disease condition, and he treats that disease condition. We're not treating any disease condition. What we're doing is that we're uh, focused on the things that rebuild, restore the health of your cells, the health of your tissues, and the health of your organs, including your brain, which is probably the most, not probably, but I would say the most important organ. Then again, the heart is also important too. So <laughs> let's, let's, get it, let's get into it. So I want to do a quick recap. Uh, we talked about keeping your marbles, keeping your marbles last week, which of course uh, basically is a play on words to say how important your memory is and how uh, how your brain, how a healthy brain leads to a healthy memory. 
And we talked about the what I call the central governing system, central governing system are the three systems that control all the other nine or 10 systems in the body, your nervous system, your endocrine system, your immune system, in that order. At the top is your, is your nervous system. Now I put above the, this is the hypothalamus, which, which, which uh, we just, is a part of the brain that controls uh, the cardiovascular system, um, your, your temperature, your sleeping patterns, your wake patterns, your breathing, and so on and so forth. So this, this system right here is probably uh, the most, uh, among the most basic parts of, of, of the brain, uh, but basically is representing your nervous system. And above the nervous system is what, I, what we refer to as the mind or the emotions. That's a, a long discussion behind that. But of course, your, your personality, who you are, your thinking patterns, your emotions, all spring from the brain, obviously. And in turn, they affect your brain and your endocrine system and nervous system. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time here. If you're going to be healthy, if you're going to have be, be able to maintain your brain health, maintain a good memory, be able to think and plan and uh, enjoy life as a whole, your brain has to be healthy. And we talked about how the hormones are important, the immune system. Many times we tend not to look at the immune system as important, but the immune system certainly plays a huge role in your brain or in brain function. And of course, blood flow, uh, which we're going to get into more, into some more, uh, your digestive system. Think about it. If you the nutrients, the raw materials that help to rebuild, to keep your brain healthy, come as nutrients. You have to eat them. Almost everything that your brain needs has to come in through your mouth and your digestive system. The digestive system has to be healthy enough to break down the fats, the hamburgers, the rice, whatever it is, into the small bits that can now be absorbed into the blood system, into the bloodstream, and taken to the brain and to everywhere else where they are now be used for, they can now be used for different things. Repair of damaged cells, uh, met metabolism, uh, removal of waste products, protection against damage by bacteria and all those things. Everything comes through your digestive system. So your digestive system has to be healthy. There are other reasons why your digestive system has to be healthy, which we're not going to get into much here. We talked about the good bugs in your digestive system. Very important. That's probably going to be another discussion altogether. But once the food is digested and absorbed into the bloodstream, the body has to, the blood, the circulatory system has to be healthy enough to take these raw materials to wherever they need to go to, including the brain. But so I put this here so to say no nutrients, no health, no nutrients, no repair, no nutrients, no rebuilding or replacing of cells and tissues. There's no regulation of your hormones. There's no metabolism, no protection. There's really no nothing. So you have to have the right nutrients. But if, and I'm, I know I'm emphasizing this a lot because I really want people to, to grasp this. You cannot take your circulatory system for granted. So if there's no blood flow, or if the blood flow is inadequate, well, it's gone. Yeah, even if you have put the right, even if the, you eat the right, the best nutrients ever, if the blood flow is not the way it should, then there's going to be problems. So let's talk about the cardiovascular system. And because, and you can see in front of you, you have a picture of all the different, um, the, the top causes of death in the world, and it's all, they're all represented by the size of the circle. And you can see right at the top, the yellow circle is the largest circle represent the heart and the and circulatory disorders. Uh, so heart attacks, atrial fibrillation, uh, strokes. Um, what else? Um, I mean, heart attacks and strokes are the top killers anyway. So, and there are others as well. Uh, but it shows just how important the circulatory system is. That's why the top causes of death worldwide are due to failures in circulation. That's why it's so important we talk about it. 
And I mentioned earlier that I, I used to be a, 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 a racquetball player. Now I'm playing squash because in Nigeria we didn't we don't have racquetball, so I had to switch. I had to switch back to squash. Um, when about 15 years ago, uh, even though I was really fit and I was much slimmer than what I am now, my BMI, uh, my fat percentage was like less than 7.4, and uh, I think the average is about. 15, uh, if, you, if you're obese, yes, it's about 30. When I was like 7.4, I remember the coach, when he measured, measured me, he was really shocked at how, 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 le- how little fat I had. Uh, my blood pressure was 110 over 70, perfect. I had no health issues whatsoever. However, once in a while, I would have, I mean, I mean without any ex- exertion at all, once in a while, I would just have this tightness in my chest. And for the life of me, I mean, that was scary because I was like, yeah, that's, this has to do with the cardiovascular system. It was quite scary, but um, I just kind of like brushed it off. Uh, but it was a problem. Uh, eventually, I found out that it, obviously I knew what uh, had to do with circulation. And again, another thing that I noticed, I would wake up in the morning and my first few steps from getting out of bed would be painful. And my feet weren't necessarily swollen, but they were like pins and needles. I knew too that that had to do with uh, circulation. So that's way back then, I started looking for things that would help to improve my circulation. And I'm gonna tell you about what, what I found out and something that maybe you can avail yourself of. But circulation is super, super important. Uh, I remember even when we used to play racquetball um, in the gym, the locker room, this older guy, I remember this particular case. Uh, my point is that circulation, uh, has to do with everything, even your eyesight. Uh, this uh, older, uh, he couldn't be less than 70. He would he would come in, one day he came in from working out and he goes to the locker and he, he turns the combination lock and he basically blurts out his like, uh, say a few things that people say in the locker room, locker room talk. And he's like, this is crazy. That before I came in here, I couldn't see these numbers on this combination lock. I go out, I, I go upstairs, I work out, I come back and you can see the numbers clearly. What happens? The working out improves his circulation. It, lets, it helps get nutrients around and help the body metabolize those nutrients, helps his eyes work better. And so his eyes can now, his eyes are getting more oxygen, his eyes, sights, his eyes are getting more nutrients and therefore they can see those combination locks even better. So circulation is super important. Uh, I have this diagram of these pictures of these, uh, 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 picture of, of how the circulation, everywhere there's a cell, you're going to find the circulation, the, the, the blood vessels reaching there to supply oxygen and nutrients. So it's super important. And I'm pointing to these, this is what a healthy artery, a healthy blood vessel looks like. The arteries have to be clear and they have to let blood flow through them. Uh, if, if they start getting private, let me see, I'm trying to put this book back here. If they start getting buildups, like you're going to see here, you see buildup here, and then you see the, the buildup is getting worse, getting worse. And this happens to everybody, quite frankly. Most people have some degree of buildup. Um, you can have a, a, about 70%, believe it or not, blockage of the blood vessels, and you won't feel a thing. You can have 70% blockage of this artery right here, you won't feel a thing. But that remaining 30% can just happen, can just get blocked all of a sudden, and then of course you have problems. So is it possible? And I probably should, I'm probably getting ahead of myself here, but so let's let just stick with this. So this is what a normal blood vessel looks like. It should be, I hope this makes sense. This <clears throat> blood flows through here, and it should be clear, and there should be smooth flow of blood. Now, Things begin to happen, things like inflammation, uh, and that cause the buildup. You find these uh, things like cholesterol, things like calcium, and other things that you don't want building up inside the blood vessels. You don't want that happening. But it's not just that because you have a lot of cholesterol in your blood. In your blood, it's if there's a, a defect, if there's what we know we now know as inflammation. This could be as a result of your diet. It could be as a result of your emotions. If you're under a lot of stress, this, this blood vessels, the inner lining will be less likely to be smooth and it will now begin to have all kinds of inflammation around it. 
So we know that bad, bad diets, emotions, lack of exercise, we'll get into that some more. Sitting down for long periods of time. Now, let, let me tell you guys, even if you exercise once a day, every day, or every week, so seven days a week, an hour each day, and you're sitting down a lot, even that can put you at risk for heart conditions. So it's very important that you address that. So I wanted to kind of like draw a picture now. So you think about it, uh, okay, I hope you can see this picture. So if you think about a garden hose, right? So garden hose, you've got this um, water comes in through the tap and then the hose, water comes in and then it flows and then you use this and it is kind of like waters the plants, sprinkles water on the plants. It's important that the inner, that water is able to flow through. Now, many times as you grow, as this pipe uh, gets older, as the holes get goes older, holes begin to show up. Holes uh, begin to pop up on the, inside the lining of the hose over a period of time. It gets old and the cracks begin to show. And so water begins to come out of the cracks, okay? And then, of course, you, you tend to, you want to replace the, the hose, get a, new, get a new hose. Or sometimes it, it could be a kink in the pipe. And that means that water is not going to be able to get out into the flowers where they need it. That happens. We all know that happens. Well, in the same way, in the same way, uh, our blood vessels, they, so this is the heart here. And the heart pumps blood into the blood vessels. Of course, the heart needs blood itself. So some of that blood goes back to the heart. Some of that blood goes nextly to the brain, to the lungs, the kidneys, and so on. And of course, the blood vessels and so on. If this, so in the same way that things could build up, debris could build up in the hose, in the water hose, Debris also builds up, and we saw those pictures earlier. Debris can also build up in the lining of the blood vessels. We don't want that happening. But what happens is that once, that, once you have issues, the, 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 the pipes, the arteries, they react. It's not, it's, they're not inanimate objects like the holes over here. They react. The inner, once there's damage or whatever it is or build up, the arteries begin to react. They're trying, they, they want to get rid of that buildup as much as possible. So you have the immune system coming up, trying to, the immune cells are coming, they're trying to clean it up. The problem is that if they don't have the right nutrients and the right resources and the right equipment and tools to clean that up, they tend to make matters worse. So that buildup, instead of them clearing up the buildup, they tend to make the buildup even worse. I know that doesn't make sense, but trust me, that's kind of like what happens. When the, sometimes the body is trying to fix things and it ends up making the matter worse than it should be. So our job, and this is what, this is what shocks me, right? Really, folks. Um, I think oh, this needs to be taught to everybody. Everybody needs to be able to understand what it takes to keep the cardiovascular system healthy, to keep these arteries, and it's the arteries we're talking about mostly, to keep them clean. I, I wish there was a way I could clean this. I could probably, okay, so I'm gonna just draw another one here. So the goal is to, clean, to, to get from this buildup here to having a clean, to having clean blood vessels. Now, if you go by what's, uh, what is standardly taught in medical schools, most people will say it's not possible. You just have to live with it. So they have to put in a stent or they put in something, some, some way of widening, artificially widening the blood vessels. We're not taught that there are things you can do to basically clean up these blood vessels and return them to what they were. Maybe in your teens or your early or your early twenties, so I'm going to show you some of the things that can be done. I think I've always talked about why blood flow is so important, but um, uh, let's, it matters in every single case. I mentioned about eyesight. One of the reasons why our eyesight is, is getting weaker is because blood flow 
to the eyes, especially the retina, is not like it should be. The reason why you're panting, you're not having, um, you're running out of breath, blood flow to the lungs may not be like it, what it used to be. Uh, you're not healing as quickly as you used to be, from maybe from cuts or from bruises or from damage or from joints, elbow problems, knee problems. Blood flow, if you had adequate blood flow, you will find that those problems would heal a lot faster. And it, can go, and it goes on and on and on and on. Blood flow is critical. We now know even when it comes to, as I mentioned last week, sometimes your memory is not the same like it should be. It's because blood flow to the brain hasn't stopped, but it is being gradually weakening or being compromised. And we showed you examples of how those things, that narrowing of the blood vessels can happen anywhere in the body, the brain, the heart, the lungs, and so on and so forth. What, why does it happen here and not there? Not a talk, topic for discussion at this point, but just so you know, blood flow is compromised everywhere. And if you have a current chronic disease like diabetes, uh, by the way, diabetes is one of the top, uh, you, you have two times Greater, greater risk of stroke if you're diabetic, or even three times. Some say you have as well as four times. Greater risk of stroke if you're diabetic. Again, because there's a lot more damage to the blood vessels and there's a lot more buildup of debris and other cholesterol and other things in people who are diabetics than people who are not. And the same goes for things like, as I mentioned, uh, uh, hypertension, chronic hypertension, or chronic disease, um, uh, even sickle cell disease, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. So, uh, you know what? What we know is that with sick, with um, COVID-19, and of course, pretty much everything you're going to talk about now, you're going to talk about COVID-19 as well. Uh, we know that the majority of people who had major problems with COVID-19 had problems, already had problems with their heart and their blood vessels. So if your blood vessels are, were compromised, I know this is a really, really big, busy slide, but if your blood vessels were already compromised, maybe you had diabetes, you had cardiovascular disease, uh, you had had hypertension, uncontrolled, you are more, of course, if, you, if you're obese, it also affects your blood vessels as well. So you are more likely to have a more severe form of COVID-19 uh, if your blood vessels if your, if, if your cardiovascular system is, is compromised. We also know that people who have uh, pulmonary hypertension, that's another thing where it's blood is not flowing to the heart like it should, to the, excuse me, to the lungs like they should. And of course, sickle cell disease. Uh, I know I'm always going to work this in because a lot of what, what we're doing, what we're doing is to raise funding to help uh, um, do research in Nigeria to help save lives of over 100,000 kids uh, who are dying each year from the disease called sickle cell disease. Uh, what we know is that 50% of kids born with sickle cell disease will not reach their fifth birthday. That's close to 100,000, um, 50 to 75%. So this is why we're doing this. I'm always going to kind of like sneak that in once in a while. Uh, these kids are suffering. They don't have to suffer like they should because we now know there are simple solutions and these solutions involve getting the right kind of nutrients to them. So how do we improve blood flow? Well, as you know, we always, always talk about the, what, what I refer to as the laws of life. There are about seven different laws, health laws, um, that affect, that we are in control of, that we can influence, that affect our health, not just our health, but our happiness, our relationships, our jobs, our businesses, our vocations, everything in life, uh, I, I like to bring them down to about seven major categories. And I, it's kind of, to me, it's like a checklist. So I can say, okay, uh, I can look, just go down the list and use that to answer different questions. So for instance, blood flow. Obviously not everything relates to blood flow here or relates directly. But the first thing I think about when I'm looking through what are the things that affect um, blood flow, uh, of course, obviously foods. There are some foods that improve blood flow. There are other foods that, that don't. Another thing uh, we know, I'm pointing to um, sleep, exercise, uh, the quality of care you give your body. 
if you're exercising well, remember the story I told you about the, the older guy who was in his 70s and all of a sudden he, he can see a small print better because he went upstairs to exercise and therefore blood flow was improved. Um, so exercise is a sure, surefire way to improve your blood flow. And of course, if you're out with friends and enjoying time on dancing or whatever it is, that's going to improve blood flow as well. We know loneliness can actually reduce blood flow. And of course, if you're doing work that you enjoy, that improves blood flow as well. So we're going to be talking mainly about specific nutrients that you can uh, take that will help to improve blood flow. And for that, I'm going to refer to uh, this three pictures of three gentlemen who won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1998. The man in the middle is probably the most famous of them, doctor, he's now 80 years old, Professor Louis Ignaro. He's a medical doctor and pharmacologist, clinical or research pharmacologist, who found out that a certain molecule, let me see, called uh, nitric oxide, they see right there, nitric oxide. And this is a book by Dr. Louis, Louis Ignaro. They found that every blood vessel, oh, let me go back now, this is, okay. They found that blood vessels produce a gas. Then they didn't know what the gas was, but they called it a factor. That once the blood vessels produce a factor, it opened up their blood vessels and allowed it allowed for improved blood flow. So it dilated and allowed for it relaxed, sorry, it relaxed and allowed blood to flow better through the blood vessels. When the body did not have, or the arteries did not have enough nitric oxide, then like I said, they didn't know what it was called. Those blood vessels became tight and unyielding and therefore did not allow blood, blood to flow through like it should. So they found out that the key to a healthy, healthy um, cardiovascular system is uh, if the arteries were producing enough nitric oxide. They don't, they don't found out that it was nitric oxide. So there's a whole industry now to improve, uh, to find out what it takes to help to release uh, more of nitric oxide. Once you're boost, once you, if you can figure this out, gen, ladies and gentlemen, if you can figure out and continually provide your body with the nutrients of the building blocks it requires to boost or to uh, have adequate levels of nitric oxide, you would almost never have problems with your cardiovascular system. That, in my opinion, is the most important aspect of the cardiovascular health. You need to take in nutrients that your body can break up and use to boost nitric oxide production. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about now. That we know that certain foods can help to boost them, boost nitric oxide. Uh, beets, we've probably, you've probably heard of. Uh, garlic and onions. And um, foods that contain an amino acid called arginine and citrulline. These are like small amino acids that the body rec recognizes and uses to break down to make nitric oxide. So l is what Dr. Louis Ignaro really kind of focuses on. He's like, this is what helps to boost nitric oxide. And he says, you need at least five grams of nitric oxide, of, sorry, excuse me, of arginine taken each day to help your body produce the nitric oxide you need. Now, having said that, let me quickly say that unfortunately, alaginine on its own is not going to do the trick. You need it in combination with other supplements as well. Because when they found out that if you just give out, if, if you just give or if you just take alaginine, it's up, uh, the body uses it immediately and then it doesn't it doesn't last long. So they found out that to make alaginine last long, you need like a supporting cast and supporting cast that not only helps to boost nitric oxide formation, but also helps to make for a healthy, the healthy blood vessels. And so um, companies have come up with different formulations that will do just that. I certainly use one 
by the way, I'm um, going back to my examples, uh, my story. Um, when I started taking this formulation for myself, all those uh, episodic pains in my chest and uh, uh, pains in my feet all disappeared. I haven't had them in a long, long time. So I know from a personal experience that this works. You owe it to yourself to ensure that you're doing something on a daily basis that will boost your nitric oxide production. Your doctor probably isn't going to tell you that. Probably your cardiologist probably is going to tell you that because they probably, they don't deal as much with nutrients and nutritional supplementation. And so, and in my opinion, that's, that's, that's tragic. I mean, to be quite frank with you, it's, it's tragic that we're not talking about that because again, most deaths are because of a faulty cardiovascular system. And if you can get your cardiovascular system to be making enough nitric oxide, a lot of problems will be taken care of. Not everything, obviously, but a lot of problems will be taken care of. So, uh, so we have a we have a supplement that can help with nitric oxide. I can I'll, I'll, I'll post it on the platform, so you can actually just order it directly from that link. Um, the, the foundation has an agreement with the company that produces it, and so they give us a commission. Yes, we will have a commission for for uh, if, if you purchase through that link. Uh, all the money goes obviously goes to. Um, to, to the foundation so we can help with, uh, with, with, with these kids and the research that we're doing. So since optimal circulation is so, so important, it is of first important, importance that we understand what it takes to maintain, improve, and yes, restore it. Once we understand that, and then as we mentioned nitric oxide, it is of first importance that we do, and I'm, on a regular basis, or at least as frequently as possible, the things that it will take. And that number one thing, again, I, I mean, it seems like I'm trying to sell something, but I gotta tell you, that's, this is so important. Uh, we found out that even with sickle cell disease patients, I had a patient uh, who had stroke. She had, she's like 10 years old. She had a stroke completely, almost completely paralyzed. She lost her twin sister identical twin sister to a stroke to stroke as well. And so the parents were really worried about her and of course um, they're poor. They really couldn't take care of all the medical bills and so on and so forth. So I just took a special interest in her specifically and um, we decided to help, excuse me, we decided to help. We were given her tons of, I mean, stuff worth $500 a month, some I mean, even more than that on a monthly basis. And we just give omega-3s, antioxidants, and inflammatories We're just giving them to them. And uh, there, there was some marginal improvement, but not much. Then finally, we got the, this formulation I'm talking about. Remember, this kid has, a, has had a stroke, um, completely dependent on her, on her parents for to, to do everything. And then we decided to give them that formulation that, has, um, that helps to boost nitric oxide production. And after a month, after a month, the father writes to me, I'm here in the US, and he's like, it's almost as if his child has just suddenly, finally come alive. She's all of a sudden laughing, seems completely aware her emotional health has improved, it's like a light bulb just came on. And of course, physically too, she was, making, she was becoming more active and moving her limbs a lot more. And that was because we switched to boosting nitric oxide formation. So back to the brain, back to brain health. It's not just, a, what we now know is that it's not just about improving blood flow, but it also nitric oxide also helps in the process of stimulating brain function as well. It's not the most, not the only thing that does that, don't get me wrong, but amongst the number one thing it does is it, 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 it boosts nitric oxide formation. So blood, um, uh, number, number one thing nitric oxide does, excuse me, is to improve blood flow, but it also acts as what is known as a neurotransmitter. So it helps the brain cells communicate better. So it's a double whammy. It helps with blood flow and it helps to, in, in, in brain function. So I think we've asked the question, how to improve blood flow? Um, it's very important that you uh, take in nutrients that can help to improve the production of nitric oxide. Now, that doesn't mean that you should 
sit down at home and watch TV all day <laughs> or play cards all day. You still got to move. You still got to exercise yourself. So that's important as well. Um, back to the brain, the, 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 the brain uh, we know that um, amongst the things that cause dementia and neurodegenerative conditions, women tend to have it worse when it comes to, new, to, to dementia uh, and Alzheimer's disease. In fact, women are twice as likely to have Alzheimer's disease than men. And as far as the US is concerned, the United States, uh, women will, are more likely to have Alzheimer's disease than even breast cancer. So it's a, it's a big problem. We know that if you improve nitric oxide formation, that is an important part of helping to improve brain health. And it's all about nutrients like l -arginine. Okay, that's about it uh, for now. I'm gonna take, whoa, it's about 30 minutes. 10 minutes more than I thought I was going to talk for. So I'm going to take a, a short break here. Um, again, we are uh, doing research in Nigeria. So if you would like to support that, then this is the information to do so. Uh, text S, uh, can we get a, a check to Brain and Body Foundation? So let's uh, open it up for questions. And uh, Jan, are you there? Taking this off me. Cool. Taking it off the mute so they can hear us. So, yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Because um, instead of text the questions to you, can I just go ahead and ask? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, okay. <laughs> awesome. My name is Lucia Fournier, and I'm really grateful to be on these uh, Zoom meetings with. Charlie, my veteran, um, and we're in Texas, <laughs> uh, Mansfield, Texas, close to Fort Worth, Texas. Um, I thank you so much for your time uh, to, cause this is very, very important information. And, you know, I've been practicing this for a while with Charlie, um, you know, working with the VA, working with uh, uh, well care, which is outside the VA. To, and they and you're right. They don't, you know, medical doctors. I, I, I'm grateful for them, but they also listen to the caregivers. And when I say, "Hey, he needs a B12 shot, and he needs this and this," if they start, they they automatically do it. Um. So, and then also, I'm really grateful because we have I found the the advantages of of. Um, getting him into well care, getting him with the VA. And then just with my knowledge in the nature pathic or the natural pathic area, I'm not against, I'm not, I'm not totally against medicines. I just, they work together. Um, and I'll tell you about another element that is phenomenal, it wraps all this up to get in the circulation and, and the, well, the cardiovascular and the brain and the um, the neurology, the, the nerves and all of that. I have a traumatic brain injury. So sometimes I stutter and, uh, <laughs> and, um, a little bit shy. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. That's so he, he, he's able to get like 700 and something dollars every three months to get, uh, CVS products. And the products that I'm able to get are like pretty much all of them, but they're not at the quality that I'd like. And um, with the expenses and so, so forth, I utilize what we're given to help him maintain. He would be dead right now. And he's doing so wonderful. And I'm educating him on what it is that I'm, I'm doing and why these calls and everything. So uh, I summed it all up with that. And I wanted to go into, um, um, have you heard of anything like clustered water? It's highly oxygenated or ionized water. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything of that? I have. I actually used it before. And I, when I was playing, playing racquetball, I, I was amazed at, at, at yeah. the energy and the clarity it gave me, yeah. Yeah. And the energy and the, the, just the detox. And when you're talking about the plaque and you're talking about, um, the, the, you know, nerve damage and, uh, well, I mean, just, it just, 
the overall like inflammation and improving the blood flow, this totally came to my mind because I'm, I'm, I know an engineer, um, he's actually in Glen Rose. He's an engineer of this very thing of this very, the processes, the, all of this with the water and it's phenomenal how, you know, first of all, your brain is made up of 90% water and your body 75 to 85%. And so it's very important to have oxygenated water, more oxygen, less pain, more oxygen in your body, less pain, less inflammation, that kind of thing. And so I just, I was like, man, this is like a key component, a key to um, getting the, the, um, the nitric oxide um, to where it needs to go. And, and like, and, and, uh, and also the highly oxygenated water detox your body of toxic, toxic stuff and that your body doesn't need. So it, it just improves the over, overall functioning and flow, uh, blood flow and oxygenation throughout your body system. So I, I just wanted to add that because it's, it's a big deal. Also what, um, I really liked, I'm, I'm making comments also because they're very important because I've been studying this, I've been studying about the water for over 20 years and I found, I got my hands on it and I almost got killed. <laughs> That's how I got the traumatic brain injury because it, it, it's when you deal with stuff like this, it just seems like warfare happens big time. Um, I also want to say that the words you speak in prayer like speaking life over your body has a lot to do with, uh, with the way you're, you could command your body with words and prayer. And that, that, that to me is a very big deal. I speak life in him. I speak life over my family. I speak life over this healing ministry that you have and, and over the, in Nigeria and everything that you're doing, I do speak life. So I just want, you to know, you have a lot of prayer support and, um, what with what you're doing um is prospering and it will succeed i just want to know i want you to know that um very so welcome. you're welcome um i think it's very important to have the knowledge of of your body knowledge is power it, it is powerful and the means to get what you need so coming through the information that you're given is very, very important and it's very needed. So I just wanted to to tell you that as well. Um, So I do have a lot of questions. I just haven't got them totally in, in a perspective. And when I bring this, uh, my notes and stuff to um, Eric and several others, and I finally get them on your, on, on the zoom calls, um, they'll be asking more questions for you. I just wanted to say thank you so much for what you bring in, in, in this, because it's very important, especially for nerve damage in your brain, which is what I'm getting through and getting familiar with. And, um, so, um, would you agree that the, the water, the highly oxygenated water, um, is important for all this uh, to happen um, in in your body um, for a quickening. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. um, sorry, I've, I'm in a brand space. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I've heard about clustered water and all that. Uh, I. Let me just admit here that I I always look at things that can be available in remote areas in Africa. That's I was raised in Africa, and so yeah. anything that is um, only found in the U.S. or hard to get, uh, I, I I I like it. It's good and all that, but I always think in terms of what is the most basic thing and what can be available in as many countries as possible. So um, I agree with you. Well, because the water is good, but um, it's not what you can find anywhere. It's not. It's not okay. available. So yeah. if you can get it, that's great. If uh, most of us can't, so so um, okay. For those on the call too, you can if you can get close to water, I strongly encourage it because, like you said, it helps to improve blood um, the oxygenation, and the more oxygen uh, your cells have, the more quickly they will recover and succeed. 
Okay. Um, I, uh, I think I'll, I'll stay with, <clears throat> with that particular qu question. Thank you for, thank you so much. <laughs> sure thing, sure thing. Let's see if any more questions, uh, anybody else with ask questions? No, I've been listening to uh, her rattle and all that. <laughs> <laughs> she does good at that too. <clears throat> but uh, I, you've got a very, very good uh, little show and everything here, and I like it. Mm -hmm. And I imagine I'll probably rattle with you later on. <laughs> thank you for participating. Well, thank, you. thank you for your service. There you go. <laughs> and you're soon. Um, wow, I'll be getting more people on this. Um, on this, so it's good to know. So when you see some new people uh, register in, I think that's how that works. Then you'll know that, well, you know, a lot of them came from me because <laughs> it's just a matter of getting it organized and getting it, getting it available. And uh, so um, we're hoping to get more people that really need to hear mm -hmm. what you have to say and support your support this, that you're doing. Um, the, um, the um, Brain and Body Foundation. There's a lot of, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more veterans and uh, supporting this, oh, yeah. for supporting what you do. So I just wanted to give you some, uh, looking forward to to this because it's very important. It's very vital actually, if I could say that, vital to our, to the, our whole world, you know? So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, I wanna, thank you very much. I want to make a comment here, David. Thank you very much for your drawing. Um, yeah. To me, that means a lot. I asked David to um, draw on a whiteboard or draw on, on something, and uh, he did that. Um, the whole was uh, just really, uh, really made me realize what the vessels are and stuff much more than the the mm -hmm. other slide and stuff. So thank you, David. And uh, I want to thank you, you for too. being on today. I'm driving for three days. And Carol, welcome to you too. And um, I, we don't, I don't know yet what the next topic will be, but um, God help possibly, or we'll see what David comes up with. But we'll try to get it out earlier, and then we'll try to get the links Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I, I put the link for the the web. Uh, if you want to get the, the, the what you call it now, the Arjunine um, publishers right there in the in the chat box. So if you do want to get it, access to it, and if you're in Yuma and you want to you get it, uh, you can always find and get it for you on a cheaper rate. What's up, John? Is anybody hearing what Jan is saying? I uh, can't hear you at all, David. You're just really mumbled. Well, I couldn't hear you at all either. Can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Well, okay, really, yeah. there must be something wrong with an intro. I'll tell you what. We just uh, just check, 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 check a chat box. I guess we've we've finished for tonight. Uh, okay. If you have any questions, you can just send us uh, the email, whatever it is. And then next week, like Jan said, we will get uh, the information out to you earlier. Okay. Thank you for joining okay. us tonight. And thank you. Thank you. God thank bless. You. God bless. All righty. Bye bye. -bye.